Today, I will be taking help from two books to make this video. The first book is How Emotions Are Made by Lisa Feldman Barrett, and the second book is How We Learn by Benedict Carey. Now, I will be explaining why white room students learned everything so fast. To explain this, first we need to understand how children starts to learn everything. When a baby borns, the newborn brain has the ability to learn patterns, a process called statistical learning. The newborn baby was bombarded with noisy, ambiguous signals from the world and from the body. This barrage of sensory input had some structure. Little by little, but with surprising speed, the brain learned to resolve this ocean of vague sensation into patterns of sights and sounds, smells and tastes, touches and interceptive sensations, and combinations thereof. Scientists have debated for hundreds of years over what we are born with versus what we learn, which White Room also wanted to find out. Let's just say that one thing we are born with is a fundamental ability to learn from regularities and probabilities around us. In fact, we learn statistically even in utero, making it complicated to determine whether certain concepts are innate or learned. Our prodigious capacity for statistical learning set us on the path toward the particular kind of mind with the particular system of concepts that we have today. Statistical learning was first discovered in studies of language development. Babies have a natural interest in listening to speech. They gradually infer the boundaries between phonemes, syllables, and words. Words allow infants to begin growing goal-based concepts, including emotion concepts. A words confer distinct advantages to a developing conceptual system. A word might begin as a mere stream of sounds to the infant, just one part of the whole statistical learning package, but it quickly becomes more than that. It becomes an invitation for the infant to create similarities among diverse instances. Babies are born able to hear the differences between all sounds in all languages, but by the time they reach one year of age, statistical learning has reduced this ability to the sounds contained only in the languages they have heard spoken by live humans. Babies become wired for their native languages by statistical learning. Statistical learning begins very early in life and goes well beyond language. Babies use statistical learning also to make predictions about the world, guiding their actions. Like little statisticians, they form hypotheses, assess probabilities based on their knowledge, integrate new evidence from the environment, and perform tests. Even from a very young age, they actively estimate probabilities based on patterns that they observe and learn to maximize the outcomes they desire. One experiment, 16-month-old children were shown two bowls containing boring white cubes and more interesting, colorful slinky toys respectively. When these toddlers were allowed to choose an object from either bowl, they chose a favorite slinky for themselves and for the experimenter. But then the experimenter revealed a third bowl containing many slinkies and only a few cubes, and in full view of the children, he chose five white cubes for himself. When the children were asked to pick from that bowl, they gave the experimenter a cube. In other words, the children were able to learn a subjective preference of the experimenter that was different from their own. This realization that an object has positive value for someone else is an example of mental inference. In the latter case, they can infer that the experimenter's goal is to choose particular colors, and they'll expect that the experimenter will continue following it. It seems as if infants automatically try to guess the goal behind another person's actions, forming a hypothesis on past experience in similar situations, and predict the outcome that will occur sev several minutes later. Now, let's get to our main question. What if a child is given education straight from birth? So, here's an example. John Stuart Mill is a classical example of the print of genius. He was educated by his father, with the advice and assistance of Jeremy and Francis Place. He was given an extremely rigorous upbringing and was shielded from association with children his own age other than his siblings. His father, a follower of Bentham and an adherent of associationism, had his explicit aim to create a genius intellect that would carry on the cause of utilitarianism and its implementation after he and Bentham had died. At the age of three, he was taught Greek. By the age of eight, he had read Aesop's fables, Xenophon's Anabasis, six dialogues of Plato, and the whole of Herodotus, and many other men of great profundity and erudition etc. He had also read a great deal of history in English, and had been taught arithmetic, physics and astronomy. The experiment appeared successful, and John Stuart Mill is considered to be one of the most influential British philosophers of the 19th century. In his autobiography, he wrote that he was shocked when he met others his age and discovered that they had little mathematical skills, language fluency, or skills. It was at that point that he realized how his father's strict educational had actually done him a world of good. 
but giving only education doesn't make anyone's personality or a human being. Later on, he quickly found that his education had not prepared him for life. Mill suffered a mental crisis at the age of 20. He thereby lost interest in life, and then he moved to romanticism and poetry to earn the meaning of life. So, why white room students learned everything so fast? It is because of many factors or reasons. The first one is they were in do or die situation. Humans are functioned to survive in this world. If one is exposed to hardships and life threatening experiences, they intend to adapt and last to survive. They strongly focused on their survival. They were committed to do to survive. Second, there were no distractions. Today, we get distracted a lot by many things, and we are occupied by bad habits. Playtime, holidays, and things resembling those didn't exist in White Room. Third reason is constant learning. White Room students were constantly keep exposing to new knowledge, and from time to time they were retested. They had a daily routine for various activities like workout, studying, etc. Fourth is emotions. When Ayana Koji was praised as a god, the instructors would strongly emphasize their words intentionally, looking to get the white room students to surpass their potential by fanning the sense of rivalry with their best, invoking and instilling the feeling of wanting to surpass Kiyotaka. It started creating various emotions like jealousy, hatred etc. in the minds of children which drive them crazy like Takuya Yugami, and became more committed in defeating him and keep doing better. Fifth is best environment. The white room couldn't give a normal environment to students to learn love, making friends etc. But, they were given the best instructors, diet etc. White room students played against a great number of so-called professional instructors and fighters to hone their knowledge, skills, and abilities in all sorts of areas over time. They were taught on many different fields like the liberal arts, sciences, martial arts, self-defense techniques, and a myriad of worldly wisdom, all of which are at or above the tiers of professional level.